Sige. Uh, so from the last session, uh, we ended up with these different commands. No, uh, we we introduced different data structures and how they can be used in Python. Okay, so we, we've I've uh, we've introduced you to sets, to arrays, to lists. Okay, stacks, queues, and dictionaries. Okay, and all of them have different um pros and cons, right? So uh, sets, if we want to uh, look at unique elements and we can also use, use it to count the unique elements, uh, arrays would be much more um, efficient when it comes to uh, accessing records rather than writing records. Okay, lists would be otherwise, so more efficient on writing than reading. Okay, um, stacks. Okay, if you want to leverage on a data structure where um, whoever comes in first will be uh, whoever comes in whoever comes in last will be the first one to come out. Okay, so you can imagine a stack of uh, Pringles. Okay, so para madale. So you could so you can easily remember how a stack works. So Pringles, whoever is on top of the stack, that's the first one you can get and you know enjoy. And for queues, okay, you can imagine a line of people or a queue of cars uh, on traffic. So whoever comes in first comes out first. Okay, so that's the process of queues. And of course, dictionaries, okay, where we map. Um, certain keys with certain values, okay? So there's a key value mapping when uh, that's happening on uh, dictionaries, right? So but the the thing about these data structures is that they are very well uh, suited for um, non-hierarchical data or very linear data, okay? So if we could just, it's as easy as, you know, counting elements or just, uh, Stacking objects, queuing objects, that's fine. It will, this, these will work. But what if we have to look at a certain hierarchy where one element has a higher priority than, than the other? And uh, let's say on a queue, instead of wh whoever is at the first, okay, who, uh, whoever comes in first, okay, the, uh, they, they, they can come out first, okay, for queues. Uh, what if whoever has the higher priority okay should be able to uh, come out first okay so may iba yung dynamics niyan so it's not about the timing when they were inserted into the structure but rather uh, the priority that they have okay as an element okay so how do how do these actually work now uh, so now we'll introduce another data structure okay which is what we call trees okay so trees um supports hierarchies uh, by storing objects into specific nodes, okay? So for example, here, we have object A as ha um, a node on this node, uh, object B on this node, C, D, and E, right? So we can see here that A, okay, is the parent of B, C, and D, while uh, B, C, and D are the children of A. Okay, so you can see here a we can see here a uh, parent and child relationship among nodes, okay, or between nodes. And um, when it comes to accessing records on a tree data structure, uh, the so we basically access the parent or the children of a specific node. Okay, so if we start at A. Okay, the only thing we can access is actually its children. So B, C, and D. But when we move to B, let's say, then we have two um, directions to access, whether it's parent, which is A, or E, which is which is um, its children, his children, okay, or E and this empty uh, node here. Okay, so if we provide a formal definition, a tree T, okay, so this is our variable, tree T, is a set of nodes such that there's a distinguished node R, which is called the root of T, 
that has no parent. Okay, so this we all we always have a node which doesn't have a parent, and that is what we call the root. Okay, so and each node v, okay, of the three t except r, which is the root, has a parent node. Right, so you only have one node which doesn't have a parent. The rest should have a parent. Okay, that's the formal definition of a tree. So given this definition, okay, if we look at this tree again, okay, which is our uh, node R? What do you think is our node R here is on this? A, sir. Okay, correct. So this is our root, okay? This is the only node that doesn't have a parent, okay? So you're right. Now, um, each node V, okay, except R has a parent node. That means that would be the rest of the nodes, okay? So B, C, D, E, and these um, empty nodes here, right? So that's correct, okay? So examples of items or um, uh, structures that you can do, okay, to use it, you can uh, use where you can use the tree data structure. If you want to leverage on a family tree, okay? If you want to um, model a family tree where you have your uh, parents, you have your children, grandparents, and so on, so you can use the family tree. Um, table of contents, okay? So we have each chapter as parent nodes of each subsection, okay? Or I think it's otherwise. Uh, okay, it depends on the book. Um, organizational structure. So the CEO has the suite of executives. So you have the CIO, CFO, um, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer. And underneath them, they have their different um, uh, uh, managers, basically managers and then employees. Okay, so organizational structure. Um, OS, OS directory structure. So if you're familiar with... Uh, of course, you will be familiar. Most of you would be familiar with the Windows uh, directory, okay? The the sets of folders, so you can actually uh, drill down into different folders, okay? Uh, same with Linux and Apple, but for the for the two that would be uh, the the uh, the root folder would be much more prominent, okay? So because it's called root on both OS, so from there you can actually start building your folders, and then underneath those folders can also come up with different folders. So you can also come up with a tree data structure from that aspect. And arithmetic expressions, okay? Um, we can also work on this, okay? If we uh, know which one to prioritize, let's say we want to prioritize um, multiplication and division over uh, plus and minus signs to leverage on the MDAS operations, then you can also work on uh, use a tree data structure. All right, so let's have more terminologies. Okay, so we've encountered the root, which is the only node that has no parent, or the node at the top of the tree. So it's usually at the top of the tree. Um, you know, by it by practice, the orientation of trees are usually going downwards. Okay, so uh, I mean, mathematically, or I mean. Uh, technically, you can also do it on every on any direction as long as you have that one node that spans nodes uh, on one direction. No? But uh, uh, in practice, usually the root is at the top of the node, at the top of the tree, I mean. Okay. We also have the parent node, which is any node with children. Okay. So it's any node except root. Except root has one edge upward to a node called the parent. Okay. So let's say we have the node V. That is any arbitrary node in the tree. If it has an edge upward, okay, or uh, then that node, okay, is its parent, okay, the parent of node of the arbitrary node V, okay. Uh, we also have the leaf, okay, which are nodes without children. An internal node is a node that has at least one children, okay. So any node can have multiple children, basically. Um, siblings is that nodes that have a common parent. So we can see here from this example, okay, that B, C, and D are siblings, uh, sibling nodes with where they have 
one common parent, which is node A. Okay, so ancestor it, um, is the node and the ancestors of its parents. Okay, so from here, if we look at the ancestors of E, so the ancestors of E is itself and its parent and its ancestors. So it's E, B, and A. So that's the recursive definition. But if you want the proper definition, it's only the ancestors excluding itself. So that would be B and A only. Okay. So the reason why that happens is that it's more on the structure of the object, which you might which you will find later on when implementing trees. Um, so recursively, we'll start at E, and it has, and we, uh, it would know who uh, it has to access itself first before it can access its um, uh, ancestors. Okay, so that's the recursive definition. But the proper definition, really, okay, if you want to be strictly uh, talking about its ancestors, that would only be the B node and the A node. Okay, so there are two definitions for ancestor. Now, subtree is a node and its descendants. So from here, okay, I'm just going back and forth slides notes because the example is here. Um, a, okay, a, um, can be a subtree of the entire tree T. Okay, so the subtree would be A, B, C, and D. Okay, so this itself, okay, let me, if I put pen, this itself is a subtree of the entire tree T, okay? Um, on the other hand, okay, I cannot delete it, okay. On the other hand, B, E, and this empty node can also be a subtree of the entire uh, tree T, okay? Or rather, okay, I'll just overlap another ink, okay? A, B, E, these two empty nodes, and to C, this is also another um, subtree of the entire tree D. Okay, so it's a node, any node, and its descendants. Okay, now we, we also have levels, which refers to the generation of a node, okay, where the root node is at level zero. Usually levels, if you look at other references, it's also referred to as the height, okay, which I'll also explain later why. So the height or the level is refers to the generation of a node. Okay. So now here's another example. Okay. Um, again, so A remains to be the root of this tree. And it's at level zero. So it's the first node or the first generation in this tree. Okay. Level one is the next generation. So B and C are the children of A. Okay, and B and C are sibling nodes. Okay, so from B, okay, B is the parent of both D and E. Okay, and uh, we can also see that B, D is the left child of B and E is the right child of uh, B. Okay, so later on orientations will be, um, will be important. Who is the left child? Who, who would be the right child? Um, the broken triangle here, okay, or the triangle drawn with the broken line here is a subtree of the entire tree, okay? So the subtree with F as its root. So you can actually come up with any subtree as long as it's a node and it's uh, descendants, right? So the DEFG would be at level two, okay, which is the next one after B and C, and HIJ would be at level three and we can see here again the nodes without children which are h e i j and g these are uh what we refer to as leaf nodes okay so if we talk about leaves or leaf nodes natin. okay so those nodes without children okay so there's one thing here that is that we haven't discussed yet Okay, but I'll also just point it out. Um, the broken line here, the F, <clears throat> excuse me, or let's say from J, the plane starting at J to A. So there's a broken line here. Okay, this is what we call um, the path. Okay, so it's the path from node J to A or vice versa. So we can also come up with paths from A to H. So it's it goes here, 
for to B to D to H. Okay, if we want to have a path from E to A to the root, we could have E to B then to A. Okay, so those uh, are different paths that you can uh, traverse on a uh, tree. Okay, now to, to complicate things more. Okay, so we have different types of trees. So we have ordered tree where the children of a node have a strict linear order. So this means that the order of the nodes here, whoever is the left or the right uh, child or subtree, it's necessary for you know, the entire operation. So which means that if we have two trees here, T1 and T2, and the first one has B as the left child of A and C as the right child of A, and the other one has C as the left child and B as the right child, then these two trees are not equal. Okay, so if these if T1 and T2 are ordered trees, then it's not equal. So orders are important here. Okay. Um, you could refer to the if you remember the, the terms combination and permutation. Okay, so permutation, the order is important for combination, not necessarily. So you might refer to that as well if that's familiar with you. But can lang yan. So if the if we have an ordered tree, then um B C is not, is not the same as C B. Okay. Now we also have binary tree, okay, which is an ordered tree. Okay, so that means uh the left and right child orientation is important. Okay, where nodes have to nodes have at most two children, okay, which is the left and the right. And, and, the, and an example of a binary tree is what you see below. Okay, so A has at most two children, which is B as the left and C as the right. Okay, B has two children as well, which is D to the left and E to the right. Okay, now G here, okay, has only one children, so it's okay, uh, which is J as its left child. Okay, so uh, that's it. this is an example of a binary tree. Again, binary, so two, two um, node, two child nodes only per parent node. Okay. All right, so more terms to describe a tree. So we can also talk about the depth, the height, and the degree of the each nodes and the overall tree itself. So when we talk about the depth of a node, it's usually the distance from node to root. Okay, so uh, let's say if you want to talk about how the depth of node G, okay, so its distance is basically 1, C, and then 2, A, right? So um, in your depth, niya, okay? Now, uh, depth of the tree, okay, is the depth of the farthest leaf which means that we have to look at all leaves and look at the maximum, okay? Uh, so here, the depth of the entire tree, the maximum level of any leaf in the tree would be at level two, okay? So that's so, so we the depth of the tree is uh, two, all right? So now, what is the height now, okay? Uh, the height is the distance from a node to its farthest descendant, okay? So for example, the, the height of node B, okay, is one because the farthest descendant would be just E and F, okay? So wala namang ibang descendants yet. But let's say if it has additional nodes here and ito meron siyang right child, okay, the height will be from B to F to this node and to this node. So that means... That means the height of this node, okay, would be equal to four, right? So it's the height of, uh, it's a distance from that node down to its farthest descendant, okay? Now, if we talk about the height of the tree, we simply look at the height of their root, okay? So for example, if we look here in this example, okay, so the height of the root will be from A, and the farthest descendant would be either E, F, or G, because they are all at the same level, then the height of the entire tree would be equal to 3. Okay? So it's equal to 3. Right? Now, 
uh, the degree node, okay? The degree of the node is the number of children of that node. So if we look at the degree of node A, that would be uh, three, okay? While the degree of the entire tree is the maximum degree of all nodes. So we can see here that the degree of B is two, degree of C is uh, one, the degree of D is zero, degree of A is three, then the degree of the entire tree would be three as well, okay? Since that's the maximum uh, degree of all nodes here on this example, all right? So any questions so far? Uh, none so far, sir. Okay. All right, how about the rest? Any questions? There's, there's a lot of terminologies here. Um, because basically you can describe a tree on various ways, right? So you can and uh from from let's say if you want to look at uh runtime, if you have to look at some computational complexity, you would have to use these um descriptions, no, because basically these are your measures of the tree itself. Okay, so yeah, but for now, since we're not discussing those things yet. Yeah, um, just keep these in mind, okay? All right, so, so A would be the root node. B is the parent of E and B is the parent of E and F, okay? D is a sibling of B and C because they are at the same level. E and F are children of B. E, F, G, and D are external nodes or leaves while A, B, and C are internal nodes, okay? They have at least uh, one children. The depth of F is two, okay? Because um, it's two away from the, uh, from the root, okay? So distance from node to root, so F, then that's zero, one, B, two, A. So the depth of F is two. The height of the tree is two, okay? Height of the tree which is the height of the root, okay? So that from A down to either G, F, or E, so that's two. Degree of node A is three, and the degree of the entire tree is three, okay? So yan yan. 